Today on Health Trust TV, it's all about the heart. First, we go out to the studio to talk with Simon Denton and learn more about the bike share program. Second, we'll go to a local beautiful park to talk with Heidi McFarlane about the different programs that Santa Clara County Parks Department provides. Elena will demonstrate how to eat healthy, and our chef of the day, Brad Creighton from Park Place, prepares a healthy granola for any occasion. Our dear Dr. Varner has five suggestions to keep our hearts healthy, and our fitness expert, Ryan Hughes, covers some great cardio exercises to pump up our hearts. All this and more on Health Trust TV. Hi everyone and welcome to Health Trust TV. I'm Adam Morella and today we'll have a special episode in the field to show you how to maintain a healthy heart. Later I'll head out to one of our beautiful county parks, but first let's send it to Paloma as she shows you how to take advantage of the new bike share program here in San Jose. Thank you Adam. I'm here in San Pedro Square in downtown San Jose and with me is Simon Denton from the bike share program. Thank you Simon for being with us today. You're welcome. So can you tell us a little bit about your program? All right, so I'm introducing the sort of Bay Area Bike Share. That's the new expansion of, or the extension of the Bay Area Bike Share program, which is based in San Francisco, San Jose, and it also has locations in Mountain View, Palo Alto, and Redwood City. It's got approximately 700 bicycles spread across 70 different stations throughout the Bay Area. How long has this program been around? Um, the Bay Area Bike Share was initially launched in September 2013, so it's been going for a couple of months now and it's been proved to be quite successful. So why San Jose? Uh, San Jose was an extension of our sort of service area, primarily due to the way our grant funding was acquired through a combination of partners, primarily the Bay Area Air Quality Management District and the VTA were our big sponsors as far as getting it extended right down to the San Jose through the peninsula and back up to the city. Oh, okay. So who's sponsoring this effort? Um, it's a combination of our private company and the SFMTA, the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, the VTA and a number of other local body partners. How do people use the bikes? The easiest way to use a system is either using a credit card that you can put into a kiosk and then you can be given a receipt that will have a number on it which you can put into the station and it will release a bicycle. Alternatively you can actually get access to the system with an annual membership and it will issue you with a key that looks very similar to this. Oh, This great. will give you direct access and you don't have to liaise with the kiosk. How much does it cost to use a bike? Um, bike sharing for a short term membership which is 24 hour access to the system is $8 and then so trips that are 30 minutes in duration or less at no additional fees and trips over that cost slightly more. There is additionally a three day membership that you can get access to for a number of hours and then as well the cheapest or most effective option is to do an annual membership which is $88 per year. So there's three payment options. Are they all allowed to use the bikes in the same one city or can they use them in multiple cities? So all of our locations, the, the gives you access to the entire system so you can get a key will work in the city right down to San Jose or you can get a number at this station for example and you can go to San Francisco on the train use the number again and you'll be able to get another bike out just the same. How long are you allowed to use the bike once you've paid? So the idea of the system is to use very short duration trips so it's 29 minutes or less is the way the system is designed so all of the stations are located in relatively close proximity that you can make it from station to station very easily. They have spread around the system, but they're also tied in with the Caltrain line, so you can travel on the train without your bicycle, get off at the other end, use your key or use your pin to access another bicycle in a new area of the system. So safety is always a concern when riding a bike. Do people rent helmets or are they available at the stations? So Bay Area Bike Show definitely encourage people to bring their own helmet. It is designed for those 18 or older, so it's primarily for adults, people that are using it mostly to commute or maybe sightseeing or going traveling, but we do have on the Bay Area Bike Share website, we have a account or a $10 credit towards a burn helmet is available to subscribers so you can get a subsidized helmet. Where are the bike stations located throughout San Jose? Um, the stations are primarily based in central San Jose around the downtown business district and slightly north of San Jose. We have 16 locations here in San Jose. Where can people go to learn more information and sign up for annual memberships? Um, probably the best source of information would be on our website which is bayareabikeshare.com or we have a Twitter and a Facebook page as well. Thank you Simon for all that wonderful information. You're welcome. And now let's pass it over to Adam at Elvisa Marina Park. 
Thanks Paloma, I'm here at Alviso Marina Park and joining me today is Acting Outdoor Recreation Coordinator Heidi McFarland. Hello Heidi and thanks for joining us today. Hi Adam, thank you. Yep, so Heidi, uh, Santa Clara County Parks prides itself on having a network of vast regional parks all connected through scenic highways and trails. Tell us about those parks and trails and also the outdoor activity opportunities that Santa Clara County is offering to its residents. Well Santa Clara County Parks now has added its 29th park to our system. And, uh, and we have an extensive network of trails in all of our parks that you can visit. And we've got a lot of different programs through our website that you can visit and mm -hmm. see the different dates and activities that are listed. Anything from taking a hike with your family and children to big special events, you know, where you can go and see special exhibits. I personally love hiking. I think it's a great way to get out and enjoy nature and exercise at the same time. So I understand it that Santa Clara County Parks is, is currently encouraging the residents to get out and enjoy the park system and you're doing that through your healthy trails program can you tell us about the program yeah we are just so lucky here to have so many different parks surrounding our communities and the healthy trails program is on its third edition of the booklet we've done a uh, since 2006 mm -hmm started out with the first edition and so we're on the third edition now and it's separated out all the different trails at our different parks we've sort of featured trails that our park staff has recommended as a good starting out point for new hikers and they're they're also categorized by easy moderate strenuous so mm -hmm. that you can sort of determine what your level is going into it That's and great. uh and not feel intimidated about going out there and trying sure. out some new trails that you're not familiar with sure that sounds awesome so how do you go about enrolling in this program well, it's real easy. It's set up on our website, so you can go to our front page of www.parkhere.org mm -hmm. and uh, click on the Healthy Trails link, and it'll send you through the system to start registration right there online. Or you can, we have a, a little brochure that you can pick up from any of our parks or park offices. Oh, perfect. And you can mail it in or fax it in. That's, that works as well. Perfect. That's awesome. So what about enrollment? How much does it cost to enroll? It's free. It's that's, free. That's the best that's part even it. better. It's that's There's even no better. Cost. As a matter of fact, we send you things as a thank you. Right. So, and like you said earlier, not everyone's an experienced hiker so how do you go about kind of finding out which trails you can use for your level well the booklet makes it really easy to use it's user-friendly by categorizing the trail as I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier by easy moderate and strenuous but when you open up to the correct page of the hike that you're looking at it's it's highlighted on the map so there's a it, it highlights the whole route that, oh, perfect. that is that particular healthy trails route and not to mention that we also have a lot of guided hikes that are available to the public oh, even with park staff leading them so if you're not real familiar with that park it's your first time there you can look up on our calendar of events and see if anyone's going to be leading a hike out there at that particular location so once a person signs up how much time do they have to complete the program you know they can take as much time as they want to they can take a year to complete it you know some people complete it in just a few months so it's really at your own pace and that's another really nice thing about it there's only five trails that mm -hmm. you need to complete within however long it takes you to complete them so besides the benefit of exercise do participants receive any awards for completing the program they do they oh, get good. a nice little pin to as a token of our appreciation for them completing the challenge there's also some other if they complete it they can repeat it multiple times so they can get other little incentives like bandanas or little backpacks first aid kits things like that so where can people go for more information about the program the website's the best place to go parkhere.org okay and, and it's front and center and you'll, that's where you can also find our calendar of events where all of our wonderful guided hikes and activities and events are listed. Perfect. So Heidi, thank you so much for telling us about the trail yeah, program. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Are you going to sign up? I'm going to sign up. I'm definitely going to sign up. I'm a hiker. So that's awesome. All so right. thank you. So I'll definitely be enrolling in the program as of all of you should at home because hiking is a great way to keep the heart healthy. Coming up, Elena will go over one of her healthy choices, but first we're going to send it to a San Jose City Council member, Pete Constant, for a special message. Hi, I'm San Jose City Council member Pete Constant and I'm challenging San Jose residents to collectively lose one million pounds this year. San Jose is a very fit city, but obesity is still a challenge for many people throughout our region. In fact, nearly 50% of the city's residents are overweight or obese. I understand how hard it can be to lose weight and keep it off. After a serious back injury years ago, I've struggled to maintain my weight. That's why I've partnered with the Health Trust, Kaiser Permanente, and other Silicon Valley organizations and leaders to launch this Lose a Million Challenge. The centerpiece of the challenge is an interactive website, loseamillion.com, which allows you to register and track your weight loss goals, see how close the city is to reaching its one million pound goal. You can also find nutritional tips, information on local parks, recreational areas, trails, farmer markets, and healthy recipes. All the things necessary to help you reach your goal. We will also be launching mobile apps for both the iOS and the Android phones that will bring the functionality of the website right to your smartphone. I hope you will join me Councilmember Pete Constant, 
take the challenge. Visit loseamillion.com. Hi, I'm Elena from the Health Trust, and today I'm going to talk about eating heart healthy through reading the nutrition labels and figuring out the fat. Everyone needs some fat in their diet, but eating too much saturated or trans fat can increase your cholesterol and risk for heart disease. Before we begin, I want to note that there's two types of cholesterol, LDL, which is considered bad cholesterol, and HDL, which is considered good cholesterol. LDL is considered bad because it attaches to the walls of arteries and can slowly build, which reduces or restricts blood flow to the heart, which could result in a heart attack. HDL is considered good because it binds to LDL and carries it away to the liver to be removed from the body. To avoid confusion, from now on, I'm just going to say good and bad cholesterol. So, how do we figure out the different types of fats on a nutrition label? First, there's saturated fat. This comes mostly from animal products and is usually solid at room temperature, like butter. These fats can increase your total and bad cholesterol, so they should be limited. Second, there's trans fat. Trans fat is not natural, but is rather industrially produced in order to prolong the shelf life of things like frosting and cakes. Trans fat should be avoided as much as possible because it can raise total and bad cholesterol while lowering your good cholesterol. Finally, there's unsaturated fats. These are considered the good fats because they can lower your bad cholesterol. These are found mostly in plants, like nuts, seeds, avocados, olives, and vegetable oils. And you can notice that they're liquid at room temperature. So how do you keep all these fats straight? First, read the nutrition label to figure out how much of each fat is in a product and whether you're nearing your daily limit. Second, a good rule of thumb is that fats that come from plants and are liquid at room temperature are usually considered healthier than fats that come from animals and are solid at room temperature. Remember, everyone needs some fat in their diet, but it's important to choose your fat wisely to eat healthily. Again, I'm Elena from the Health Trust, giving you the tools to make a healthy choice. Thank you, Elena. Stay tuned as Chef Brad Creighton from Park Place prepares a healthy granola for any occasion. Later, Ryan Hughes, our fitness expert, covers some great cardio routines, but first, a healthy tip from one of our community members. Hi, I'm Autumn Young. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, heart disease is the leading cause of death for both men and women. Luckily, heart disease can be prevented, but it's up to you. Here's how. Eat a healthy diet that includes five servings of fruits and vegetables each day, and limit the amount of salt in your daily diet. Five servings sounds like a lot, but it's easier than you think. Just make half of every plate you eat fruits and veggies. At the museum, we like to say, eat a rainbow of fruits and vegetables every day. Also, maintain a healthy weight by exercising regularly, at least 150 minutes per week. Here's a simple way to get your fitness in. Spend 10 minutes twice a day doing any form of physical activity that you enjoy. Eat healthier and exercise regularly. It's that simple. For more information about maintaining a healthy heart, visit www.healthtrust.org. And remember, eat a rainbow of fruits and vegetables every day. Invest in our community's voice and become a friend of Create TV. Just pledge an ongoing monthly donation to Create TV San Jose and we will do the rest. Your support allows Create TV to provide thousands of San Jose students with digital media skills, help hundreds of San Jose nonprofits tell their stories and build capacity, and air thousands of community videos. To donate, visit createtvsj.org or call 408-295-8815. Hello everyone and welcome back to Health Trust TV and today for our cooking segment we're joined by Chef Brad Creighton from Park Place Restaurant. Thanks for joining us today Brad. Thanks for having so me. what kind of heart healthy food will you be cooking up for us today? Today we have our house made granola with honey, coconut, uh, raisins, it's made with uh, 
Maple syrup as well. Mm, sounds good. Yeah, it sounds really good. Very good. Okay, so how do we get started? What do we got to do here right. to, to get this going? First, we start with two pounds of rolled oats. Okay. Put that in here. So we got a good amount of fiber in the oats, right? Yep. Perfect. So we got a good fiber meal going here. And then two ounces of uh, sesame seeds. You can also use flax seeds, oh. chia seeds, other seeds if okay. you want to. Great. Um, let's see, eight ounces of coconut flakes. Unsweetened coconut flakes. Unsweetened too. coconut yeah. flakes. So co coconut oil, another very healthy fat. Mm -hmm. We also have four ounces of raisins. You can use raisins or craisins. We use the craisins uh, at the hotel. Okay. Um, but the craisins have a lot more sugar in them. Okay. Raisins are just kind of dried. You don't have as much sugar less in them. It's sugar. a little bit healthier. Yeah. Because we are putting sugar in there as well. Okay. So um, raisins a be better bet yeah. for the health. Okay. Six ounces of sliced almonds. Another and this makes fat. Yeah. This makes actually a pretty good amount. So it'll keep for a couple weeks too. Have it for breakfast. You can use it for granola parfaits. Things like Very that. Nice, yeah. Uh, eight ounces brown sugar, and then let's see, we have vanilla. It's one mm -hmm. tablespoon of vanilla. Okay. We have honey. You can use honey or agave nectar. Okay. Oh, okay. If you want a lower glycemic index with uh, agave nectar. So the agave yeah. nectar better for blood sugar? Is that what you mean by the? It lower is better for diabetics. Index. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but of course there's plenty of sugar in there too, so that sure. we don't want to add anything else to that. Okay. But making it at home, you know exactly what's in Making it at home, you know exactly what's in there. It's yeah. not like the store-bought granola where you don't know what's in there. It's better to make anything yourself because yeah. you know exactly yeah. what's in there. A lot more there. sugar, I'm guessing, in the store-bought yep. granola. Huh? We have a quarter cup of maple syrup. Mm. We use pure maple syrup. Okay. Um, imitation is mostly corn syrup and flavoring, yeah. so okay. it's better to use the real deal. Okay. We have one cup olive oil. And you said this keeps for a good week, or? Keeps for a good couple weeks. In the fridge, if it's, if it's in an airtight container, it can mm -hmm. keep for about two or three weeks. Oh, great. So yeah. Olive oil. So you can use olive oil, canola oil, um, any kind of oil. And the olive oil is a little bit healthier, so oh, we okay. use olive oil. Perfect. And you mix it really well. So far it looks pretty easy, huh? Yeah. Something yeah. that I can handle at home. <laughs> Anyone can yeah, do it yeah, at home, okay. so. How long does it That's normally take to make? It takes about 30 to 45 minutes in the oven. You have oh, to be okay. really careful okay. to make sure you scrape it, it so it doesn't burn. Oh, okay. Most of the cooking time, well, all the time is basically in the oven. You just gotta make sure you pay attention okay. to it. Okay. So are you just Mixer. stirring it inside Just stirring it to coat every little bit of it. Okay. Break up the, uh, the brown sugar and everything. Yeah. And uh, what temp are we baking this at? We're gonna be baking at 350 okay. for 30 to 35 minutes. But like I said, about every five to 10 minutes. It's something you kind of have stirring. to babysit and okay. keep on stirring. So it's not something that you want to cook at a higher temp to try to speed up the process, huh? No, that would okay. not, not, a good. Good um, not a good as idea. As long as you're watching it, I mean, we use the industrial ovens where you have uh, a convection and you have the fan going. Yeah, yeah. So as long as you lay it out thin and you're in front of it the whole time, you can speed it up somewhat, but I wouldn't go a higher temperature. You wouldn't recommend okay. Right. Just the fact that you have the fan on makes it a little bit hotter. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, so this good. can be a, something you eat, you know, with yogurt, but it also could be kind of a, a healthy little snack to kind of keep and keep with you throughout the day. Huh? You could make trail mix with it. We actually use it for trail mix for some of uh, some of our breakouts too for meetings. Mm -hmm. oh. They make they make their own trail mix. So you put a little bit of this. You put some extra raisins. You put some chocolate. That sounds really Chocolate good. chips. You can make yeah. your own trail mix with it too. Yeah. So yeah. it's good for a lot of different things. It will yeah. not last in the cabinet too long. Yeah. Like all it's a juices. healthy snack for like children too. Yeah. Perfect. So all heart healthy ingredients we have going on so far here. Yeah. Yep. Good. This is so great. Put it into the oven. Something very easy to make at home. You can even split it actually into two pans so it works a little bit better. Okay. So it sits and bakes, right? So the magic of television, we have the finished product We're, here ready to try, right? We do. We have uh, our granola. This one's made with the craisins. And normally you said when it comes when it comes out, what does it look like when it comes out first out of the oven? It pretty much looks just like that. It's it's kind of stuck together into bigger clumps, so you can break up the clumps, and mm -hmm. or you could actually leave the clumps a little bit a little bit bigger too. You could use it. You can press it together too and make kind of like a granola bar out of it. Granola well. bar. Yeah, oh, okay. I think using it as a snack, kind of keeping it with you throughout the day. Yeah. Snacking is one of the things that people have a really hard time with doing something healthy. So. Having something like this readily available yep. throughout the day to kind of balance blood sugar and that's heart healthy um, is a really, really good option yep. to have, huh? Um, I'm gonna give it a taste. Yes, me too. Yep. Mm. 
It's really good. Bro, that's amazing. Great ingredients. Yeah, I'm Love gonna it. I'm going to take some home with me. <laughs> Thank you again, Brad, for your cooking segment. We really appreciate you taking the time to cook for us. Thanks for having me. And stay tuned, for we have more coming up here at Health Trust TV. Hi there, and welcome. I'm Dr. Jane Varner from the Palo Alto Medical Foundation, here with the doctor's message. Today, I'll be reviewing my top five tips for a healthy heart. So what is heart disease anyway? Heart disease, also known as coronary artery disease, describes a condition in which plaque builds up in the walls of the arteries that directly supply blood to the heart muscle. This plaque buildup can eventually lead to a heart attack. There are many factors that contribute to plaque buildup, such as high cholesterol and stress. Although there is increasing awareness of heart disease, 600,000 people still die from heart attacks each year in the United States. Here's how you can lower your risk of a heart attack. Number one, exercise. That's right, get moving. I recommend 30 to 60 minutes of exercise four to six days per week. Ideally, your exercise program will combine aerobic exercise such as walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, or aerobics class with some strength training. Keep in mind that housework and gardening count too. Number two, reduce stress in your life. Stress can cause high blood pressure, an irregular heartbeat, and even directly damage blood vessels, making you more susceptible to heart disease. Exercise, meditate, plan fun activities with family and friends, whatever it takes so that you don't feel so frazzled. Number three, change the way you eat. Limit salty and fatty foods. Try not to exceed two grams of sodium per day even less if you have high blood pressure. Incorporate lean proteins such as chicken, turkey, and fish. Salmon, sardines, and mackerel are particularly healthy because they are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which are great for the heart. Add foods that are high in antioxidants such as blueberries, sweet potatoes, and dark green leafy veggies. Number four visit your healthcare provider. Everyone should periodically have their blood pressure and pulse measured, along with their body mass index and even waist circumference. The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force recommends cholesterol screening at least every three to five years, more often if it is high. Tell your doctor about any family members who may have had heart disease or high blood pressure especially at an early age. Number five, quit smoking. Cigarettes are really bad for your heart. The chemicals in tobacco damage your blood vessels and the carbon monoxide in cigarette smoke replaces oxygen in your blood, forcing your heart to work much harder to get the job done. The great news is that if you quit smoking now, in five years, your risk of heart disease will be the same as a non-smoker. If you plan to live a long and healthy life, the time to take care of your heart is now. Again, I'm Dr. Jane Barner with The Doctor's Message. Coming up next is Ryan Hughes, our fitness expert, covering cardio routines, but first, a healthy tip from one of our community members. Hi, I'm Sergeant Heather Randall of the San Jose Police Department. Heart disease can be frightening and life-altering, but you can prevent it before it gets serious. Eating healthier and exercising regularly is a must. Monitor your blood pressure and have your cholesterol checked at least once every few years. Both are early indicators of potential heart disease. Don't smoke and limit your alcohol use as they can lead to heart disease and high blood pressure. In the event that you think you're having a heart attack, here are the five major symptoms. Pain or discomfort in the jaw, neck or back. Feeling weak, lightheaded or faint. Chest pain or discomfort. Pain or discomfort in the arms or shoulder. And shortness of breath. 
If you think that you or someone you know is having a heart attack, call 911 immediately. For more information about heart disease, visit www.healthtrust.org. Hi, my name is Ryan Hughes, and today we're going to discuss a little bit about cardio. Cardio has a host of benefits. Uh, it's great for heart health, it's great for overall health and fitness, and of course it's great for fat loss. Um, we're going to talk about a different style of cardio today. Normally, you know, we incorporate walking, running, uh, biking, those types of cardio into your regimen, but today we're going to talk about high intensity interval training. Essentially what this is, is speeding up and slowing down while you're doing cardio and controlling your heart rate. Your heart rate is everything in terms of calories burned and fat loss. So today we're going to demonstrate this on a bike. You can also use the treadmill um, to go fast and slow. You can go from a steady state walk to a sprint, back down to a walk, and so on and so forth for 20 to 25 minutes is what we're shooting for. You can also do this outside if you don't have access to a gym. Um, by walking slow at a steady pace and then also increasing your speed to a run or even a sprint. Um, so, but today we're going to focus on a bike and I'm going to demonstrate that for you here today. Let's start off uh, moderate intensity. So I put the bike about halfway up in terms of resistance and I just began pedaling. I'm going to go for about 45 to 60 seconds at this moderate pace of pedaling. And then for 20 to 30 seconds, I'm going to go as fast as I can and as hard as I can to really get my heart rate up, get my breathing going, um, accelerate my heart rate, and try to really kick out some calories. And then I'm gonna drop it back down, regroup, and kind of let my heart rate settle back down to around 100 to 130 reps or beats per minute. And once you're comfortable, once you can control your breathing again, we're gonna go right back under duress and ramp up the, the resistance and the speed again. So you're gonna do this for about 20 to 25 minutes 60 seconds nice and slow and steady, 30 seconds full intensity as fast as you can go. And in that 20 to 25 minutes period, you would probably burn two to even three times as many calories as you would in an extended steady state cardio session. Um, this is something like walking on a treadmill on an incline or even just taking a, a brisk walk around outside. Those are great forms of cardio, but if your goal is fat loss and your goal is ramping up your, your heart rate and really burning those calories, you wanna incorporate something with a little bit more intensity in the gym. So this is a great way to do that, and like I said, you can use multiple forms of cardio equipment or even no equipment at all to achieve these results. My name is Ryan Hughes with the Health Trust TV, reminding you to stay healthy. Well, that's our show for today. Remember, everything you learned and more can be found on our website, www.healthtrust.org. Visit the site and join us next time as we bring Silicon Valley the latest in health. Thanks for watching Health Trust TV.